and welcome to this video on self-steepening in nonlinear fiber optics. In a previous video, which should be linked right up here, I explained how the spatial frequency beta of light propagating through a medium depends on the temporal frequency of that light. And essentially, there's a dependency on the frequency due to the refractive index of the medium being variable. Now, we can take this expression for the spatial frequency and then tailor expand it around any given carrier frequency of choice. And that's quite useful because when we launch pulses into the medium, that pulse will consist of a certain carrier frequency with a frequency of omega naught, but also small contributions from neighboring frequencies. That's in fact what turns it from a continuous sine wave into a finite optical pulse. So if we can understand how the spatial frequency of both the carrier but also its adjacent frequencies are different, we can model how the pulse propagates through the medium in terms of the phase velocity and the group velocity. Now, another important contribution to the spatial frequency is potential nonlinear contributions. Essentially, if the intensity of this pulse is very high, it's going to alter the refractive index and potentially change the way that the pulse propagates. It turns out that we can write this contribution to the spatial frequency also as a tail expansion the following way. Now, in uh, my first video on nonlinear fiber optics and the split step free method applied to the nonlinear Schrödinger equation, it was essentially under the hood assumed that only the first order contribution to this spatial frequency change was present. In other words, this delta beta naught. And essentially that resulted in the following expression for the phase shift experienced in the time domain when we're propagating uh, through, this, uh, through a nonlinear fiber. So in other words, the idea here is that the local phase shift of this pulse is proportional to the local power. In other words, if you consider these two points of the pulse, we can see they have the same overall power over here, which means they must experience the same phase shift. Okay, but what happens if we don't just include the zero order term here? What happens if we also include the first order term, which is a frequency dependent part of the change to the nonlinear uh, nonlinear change to the, the spatial frequency? Well, it turns out that what happens is that we get both the same beta naught term from before that just depends on the local power of the field, but also this other term here, which depends on the local gradient of the, the pulse. So if again, we consider these two points right here, we can see they still get a phase shift that's dependent on the local power, which as we saw in an earlier video will lead to a broadening of the spectrum due to cell phase modulation. But we also get another phase shift that's dependent on the gradient in the following way. We can see that these two have different gradients, this one's positive, this one's negative. So these two uh, terms here will have different signs in that case. And so you might be wondering, okay, what does that mean for the propagation of the pulse down the length of the fiber? Now it is possible to look into the exact details of what happens if we sort of get a time dependent phase shift here and look at the different, let's say, um, changes in frequency that arise that gives rise to. But I think the easier way to think about this is to think about the peak of the pulse, in other words, where the gradient goes from being very positive to very negative. But we can see in any such location with a high peak of the pulse power, we must have a very high change in the refractive index compared to its sort of nonlinear background value. In other words, if you have a very high value of the refractive index here, then the light should be propagating more slowly at that location. And if the light at this peak here propagates more slowly, we expect it to begin to lag behind and basically shift towards the right. Because remember that in this sort of diagram, positive values correspond to later times and negative values correspond to earlier times. So again, because the power is very high here, we expect a higher refractive index, which should cause the pulse to slow down and shift towards the right. Now, I've implemented the um, extra nonlinear gradient steepening term in my code for, the, um, for simulating the split step Fourier method in Python. And essentially, we do indeed see that as we propagate down the length of the fiber, the pulse gets more and more steep because the peak begins to shift towards the right. And I want to emphasize here that in this simulation, I've artificially assumed that all of the different linear dispersion terms are equal to zero. So the shift you're seeing here is not due to the inherent dispersion of the material. It's only due to that nonlinear self-steepening gradient term I showed on the previous slide. So you may have noticed that after a certain distance around, I think it's like 12 meters, we get this strange spiking behavior here of the pulse. Now, you may be wondering if that is a real physical phenomenon or if it's just a numerical artifact. And it turns out that this is actually just a numerical artifact of the simulation. Essentially, the reason is that it's not possible to have all of these terms here be equal to zero, even if you somehow manage to design a very special fiber where, let's say, a finite number of these are going to be zero at first. Sooner or later, one of them is going to be non-zero. And the point is that as we propagate down the length of the fiber, both spectral broadening due to the cell phase modulation term as well as the uh, extra gradient term will cause the pulse to broaden in the spectral domain. And at some point, some of the spectral power will be present at a frequency where this term becomes significant. And so in other words, that leads to a frequency-dependent shift in the um, 
the different contributions to the, the pulse, which means that we get temporal broadening here in the time domain. So in other words, before we actually hit this point of infinite steepness and we get all this sort of spiky nonsense, the pulse is going to sort of broaden out and smooth out in the time domain before anything gets completely out of hand. Now, I've linked a quick note in the description, which hopefully should explain this in a bit more detail. So feel free to check that out if you have the time. Anyway, that was just a quick video on self-steepening. Feel free to check out some of my other work over here and stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.